Good morning. Today we are going to start a new chapter which is strong and weak policy effects in the ISLM model. The first part of this chapter is about LM. As we last time, we have derived the IS curve, mathematical and graphical. So now we are going to start with the first part of our chapter, which is related to LM or money market. What's money? Money is defined as any good or asset that serves the following three functions. Number one, medium of exchange will be used in order to buy goods and services. Number two, store of value which means to accumulate wealth. Number three, unit of account or unit of measurement. So any goods or serve or assets that can function as uh, or do the, the, the three functions together is known as money. Usually, money is generally acceptable. So we have to find a good or asset that is generally acceptable and can serve the three main functions of money, which are medium of exchange, store of value, and unit of account. So money supply is equal to currency in circulation which is currency in the hand of the public plus checking accounts or checkable deposits at banks and the thrift institutions. This is the narrowest definition of money. So here we are going to focus on the narrowest definition of money, which is M1. As in this case, money supply is calculated as currency in the hand of the public in addition to checkable deposits or the highest liquid forms of money. So when we, we are going to talk about money, money is like any commodities that has a demand side and supply side. So this is money supply, which is determined by the central bank. What about the money demand? Demand for money is derived or determined by people's need for money to facilitate transactions. And according to Keynes, people demand money for three main purposes. Transaction demand for money or precautionary demand for money or speculative demand for money. With respect to 
transaction demand for money. It's highly affected by income level. So we will demand money for three main purposes. Number one, in order to undertake transactions to buy goods and services. And this is going to be determined by or affected by the income level. So when income increase, money demand will increase. So it's a positive relationship. If price increase, money demand will increase. Number two, precautionary demand for money. Precautionary It's also affected by income level. So precautionary demand for money is demand for money in order to meet future needs. Unexpected future needs. Number three, speculative demand for money. In this case, people demand for money in order to make profit. They are going to make speculations and make profit. This is going to be affected by interest rates. So transaction demand for money and precautionary demand for money is affected by income level, while speculative demand for money is affected by interest rate. So this means that demand for money is a function of income and interest rate. Also, price level will affect the demand for money. If prices are going to increase, demand for money will increase. But this is the nominal demand for money. What about real demand for money? Real demand for money is money demand divided by the price level or the actual purchasing power of money. Real demand for money is unaffected by change or increase in price level. So once again, demand for money is positively related to income and negatively related to interest rate. As when interest rate is going to increase, this means that cost of holding money is going to increase and people would like to invest or keep money more. Uh, they are not going to demand money. Okay, so there is a negative relationship between interest rate and demand for money. So we can write the demand for money equation. We would like to keep prices constant or um, demand for money is not affected by the price. So we are going to use the real demand for money instead of the nominal one. as ky minus hr where k is the change in the demand for money when income increase or change by one unit its positive relationship and h is the change or by how much Real demand for money will be affected by interest rates and it's negative due to negative relationship. Y and R are the income and the interest rate. So this is the general linear form for the real demand for money equation. 
So what are the factors that shift or affect demand for money? The main factor that affect demand for money is income. What else? Expected future inflation or expected future prices. If people expect the prices to increase, so they will try to hold as little money as possible. Factor number two, wealth. If people become more wealthier, some of the additional money may be hold as, uh, so sorry, some of the additional wealth may be hold as money. So demand for money in this case is going to increase. Number three, payment technologies. Improvement in the payment system, how you are going to pay for the goods and services. Uh, the ease of switching from money to non-money assets can change money demand. Say, for example, credit cards and ATMs will affect demand for money. So people need to decrease or they don't have to increase money demand as they have a substitute for money, which is the credit cards, for example. LM curve. LM curve. L stands for liquidity and M stands for management. So liquidity management or LM curve shows all possible combinations of income and interest rates such that money market is in equilibrium. So this means that along the LM curve, any point along the curve is a point of equilibrium in the money market. So just like what we did in uh, IS curve, we have to find the LM equation mathematical, and then we have to drive the LM curve graphical. As we said that it is, or LM curve shows equilibrium in money market. So equilibrium will be achieved when the real supply of money is equivalent to real demand for money or real supply of money is equivalent to the equation KY minus HR. So now we can solve the equation for Y. So money supply real value minus, sorry, plus HR equal K 
ky. Divide the whole equation by k. So we can write it as y equal 1 over k multiplied by the real value of money supply plus h over k r. So this is the LM equation, which shows the relationship between income and the interest rate in the money market. What are the factors that shift or affect the LM curve? Okay, let's drive the LM curve before shifting this curve. The left side panel shows equilibrium in money market and the right side panel will be related to LM curve. This is the quantity or Y and this is interest rate. On the X axis on the left side panel, this is money supply or real value of money, whether it is demanded or supplied, and the interest rate. Money supply is determined by the central bank. So it is parallel to x to y axis or vertical line. So, so this is money supply curve. Actually, it is the real one, not a nominal one. While money demand curve is negatively sloped demand curve, so this is real money demand curve. Point of intersection is point of equilibrium at a specific level of interest rate. Say for example, 5%. So at 5%, this is the income level at this 5%. Now let's assume that interest rate is going to decrease from 5% to 3%, for example. As a result to any change in money demand, any one of the factors that affect money demand has caused a shift to money demand curve to the left or downward. So we have new interest rate level, which is 3% at a new income level. Now we have two points. We can connect the two points together. This is the LM curve. So once again, the black lines represent the initial situation where at a specific level of income, say Y1, the economy reaches equilibrium at the point of intersection of uh, money supply curve and money demand curve at 5% interest rate. This is, for example, point A. As income decreases from Y1 to Y node, money demand decreased and the money demand curve shifted to the left. And we have new equilibrium point at 3% interest rate at point B, for example. Now we can connect points A and B together. This is the LM curve. 
LM curve is positively stoked, showing the relationship between Y and R, and any point along the curve shows equilibrium in money market. What are the factors that shift the LM curve? Anything that affects the intercepts will cause a shift of the curve, while anything that affects the slope will cause a rotation for this curve. Let's start with shifts. Number one, a change in money supply. As we said, money supply is determined by the government. So if the central bank decides to increase or decrease money supply, so money supply curve will shift to the left or to the right and LM curve will shift to the left and to the right as well. Number two, increase in price level or change in price level. Incre change in price level will affect demand for money and LM curve will shift to the right. So it will shift if it's going to increase. So demand for money is going to increase as well. And demand and the LM curve will shift to the right and vice versa. What about the rotation? If there is any change in H or K, so LM curve will rotate, or in another words, slope, slope of LM curve will change, whether it's become steeper or flatter curve. So once again, shifts of LM curve, anything that reduces money supply will cause a shift to demand curve upward. This is the initial situation, money supply, and this is money demand at a specific income level. And this is LM in this case. Now the government decides to increase money supply, so money supply curve will shift to the right. So this is the new money supply curve. at a lower interest rate, but the income level is constant. There isn't any change in the income level. 
Okay. So this is the new LM curve. At the same level of income, but a lower interest rate level, we have a new LM curve. This is as money supply increase or money supply curve shifts to the right. So any factor that affects money supply will cause shift to LM curve. Any factor that affect money demand will cause a shift to LM curve. So this means that expected inflation, wealth factors that affect money demand will also affect LM curve or cause a shift to the LM curve. Okay, this is the end of our lecture today. Next time, we are going to talk about general equilibrium in both markets, goods and services market and money market. Thank you and see you next week.